So hello and welcome to Studio Art Project 8. This is the Bell Tetrahedral Kite and it is um, going to be a two week project because it's more difficult than the other kites. Um, and we're gonna split up into two parts. However, I've put the second part on here in case you feel like you want to go ahead and spend a long weekend doing the whole thing. Um, it will, uh, you will need to present the first half by next Tuesday, which is our class day because of Memorial Day. And the final project will be due, the final results will be due on June 1st for our last week. Um, but like I said, you can finish it early if you'd like. Um, so we're going to start with looking at this image here, which is a little bit of irony. This is, um, Ruby Chow Park it is a park that's in Georgetown, not far from where I live. And um, oddly enough, kites have a relationship to flying um, and to the development of airplanes. And yet at this park, you cannot fly a kite. And that is because that is an airport that you're looking at. And kites would interfere or um, jeopardize the safety of people trying to land there. But as I said, um, kites are uh, part of the history of flying. And so Alexander Graham Bell was um, famous for inventing the telephone, um, but he was also really interested in flight and trying to develop something that could help people fly. And so he got, um, he slowly worked on different kite models and developed what is called the bell tetrahedral kite. Um, and this structure, although it never quite made its way um, into mainstream flying, it did, um, you know, the aim was to carry humans through the air and it only worked very minimally. I think there was one that went um, maybe a couple feet off the ground but it was known to be a very strong kite that could um, carry a lot of weight if there was a strong wind. So the tetrahedral is a four-sided triangle or pyramid um, and it's just built by joining um, four triangles together to create this pyramid shape. And so that is gonna be the basis for our kite, is building four uh, tetrahedrals and then connecting them together to create a pyramid um, and skinning two sides of each of those tetrahedrals to create our kite. So before we um, get into building or learning how to build the kite, first we're gonna look at the work of Tomas Saraceno. Uh, he's an Argentinian artist who does a lot of work with um, flight and using um, like solar power to make things or wind power, natural elements to make things fly. Um, and what he says about this series that you're looking at, it's called Solar Bell. And Solar Bell is a flying sculpture that is built using the latest technologies in the field of lightweight materials and the sustainable energy technologies. Its design is based on the modular tetrahedron or four-sided pyramid invented by Alexander Graham Bell during his early investigations into manned flight. Bell made important discoveries in the field of aviation and frame construction and happened upon the strongest geometrical structure in the known cosmos the octet truss. So Alexander Graham Bell tried different arrangements of the tetrahedron to just see how he could play with lift and um, strength and just try to get the best kite he could um, with that geometric shape. And Tomas Saraceno also um, developed a series of kites inspired by this ringed version, um, but these were sonified. So they um, could play sounds and, you know, when the wind blew through them, they would also make noises or make kind of uh, sounds, chime sounds. And then also w he made a big sculpture that was so uh, had both solar panels and also was sonified. So when the sound, when the wind went through it, it would create a sound 
Um, and his idea was even just to sort of envision um, that kite, that large structure, actually even lifting the building or just trying to think about um, what kinds of ways that wind power could be used to um, as, as a sort of a force and, and a force that can either move or sustain or support things. All right, so now we're going to do part one of how to build a bell tetrahedral kite. Um, so you're going to need six six inch sticks. Uh, so if you have the bamboo mat that I sent out, those are one foot long sticks. So you just cut them in half. Notice how I'm holding both sticks at the same time. I cut a few where they I didn't do that and they flew across the room. So. Um, you're going to need six sticks of the same length. Um, you're welcome to use sticks from the yard once again, anything that you can find. Uh, but you want them around six inches. If they're bigger, unless you want to make a huge kite, um, that's about the right size for the paper we have, both the big and the small paper. And um, it, it's a very manageable size. And then you're going to cut out six, or, sorry, four triangles. Um, and we're gonna sh I'm going to show you how to use paste to um, create the join. As you can see in the demo that I have there, the corners are joined with paper. Um, and then I'll show you how to use tape. But I want you to at least show an effort, even if at the end it's a pile of broken things. Um, I want to see evidence that you've tried this technique first. Um, it's stronger. It's lighter in kite making. Uh, weight is a very important issue, and although these are not going to be flyable kites, um, they I just want you to at least try this technique. Um, and so what I'm doing is I am getting the paper completely covered in glue, and I've got a wet towel next to my arm. That is because I'm using my hands a lot, and it's easier if I wipe the glue off and then continue on sometimes rather than just trying to deal with sticky hands. So you're going to lie out, lay out the um, sticks in a T shape, and then you're going to fold that paper over. And that's going to give you this flexible joint, and that's what we're going for. Is we need a joint that is very flexible so that we can bend those sticks and attach them together eventually. Next, you're going to move to one or the other end, and you're going to build a second connection point or junction. So I lay my triangle down, and then I give myself a nice tab to fold over and this paper when it gets glued it gets kind of mushy which is great though because it's very moldable you have to be careful so it doesn't tear and I actually recommend waiting going and like doing this and then taking a break for a while and letting that glue dry I'm going to go straight through and I even had problems with it tearing um, but just for the purpose of having a full demo, I went straight through. Um, but if you can do parts of this and leave and then come back and do more, it's much, much easier if you let the glue dry in between um, each step. And you can even do it, you know, factory style where, do, you know, you do a bunch of these um, are all your uh, pieces at once. So now I'm doing my last row. And I'm only joining one side, or like um, sort of smooshing the glue down on one side because I'm about to pick this up and create the triangle, the first triangle. And it's very difficult to do that in a way that I can show you guys. So I'm trying to <laughs> both struggle doing this and then struggle making it visible. But I am st sticking that last stick in that hole there, and now I have 
my three points that I can join to make the pyramid or the tetrahedral. It's a little bit tricky. I probably should have laid it flat on the table, that part flat, but what I'm doing is I'm just taking that triangle and kind of doing my best to fold it over and then get the sides. And I'm sorry, it's not so easy to see with my hands in the way either. You might find that you have to join two and then take another piece of paper to do the third, and that's fine. There are a lot of ways to do this, and if it was, if we were back in school in an ideal time, we would have been using dowels, and um, I would have, my plan was to 3D print these corners. But this is actually nice and light, and it also teaches you how to make um, paper tape, essentially, which is strong and can be a lot more aesthetically interesting or beautiful if for some you know, for th some crafts that you make. So now I have the tetrahedron and I need to let it sit and, oh, I had a little tear there. So I'm just putting in an extra um, piece of paper to help hold that together. That's fine. And then you leave it and not move it like I did. Let it dry. Don't fool with it and then come back to it. Even if something slips out, you can let it dry and come back and add another piece later. Um, so now I have my kite sides. Um, you're gonna want to have four all together, but only two are due by um, next Tuesday. So now what I'm about to show you is um, if you try, so you need to try the paper version, but if you try it and it just is not working for you and you're very frustrated and you need a win and not to struggle with it, um, I understand. <laughs> um, so what I'm going to show you is how to use tape to do the joining and I suggest masking tape because you will be able to glue paper to it much easier than, um, and it, it's a little bit more pliable and different. It's it, it's just different than, um, it's more like paper. So it's going to be easier to work with for this particular project than scotch tape. Um, so if you have a bunch of different tapes at home and you get frustrated and you have to go to the, the tape method, uh, try to find a tape that is more the find the tape in your house that most resembles paper. Um, and so um, you can see I'm just doing the same technique, but then I'm just flipping it out, flipping the tape over on it. So there I just do part by leave that end open. I don't tape it down. If it accidentally gets squished, that's okay. I'll just take a new piece of tape and then I'm gonna bend that piece of tape so I can put the last part in. And I was able to get all three connected with that piece of tape, but if you need an extra piece of tape, that's fine. Um, so there's the same thing, but done with masking tape. And so now we need to skin these. Um, so we are, oh, I'm just cleaning up little bits. Um, it doesn't matter. You actually don't, uh, you know, when you're all done, you can clean them up if you want something aesthetically different. Um, but you're gonna get your paper can be any of the papers you made. Um, just go for ones though that were done on the um, 
on the rice paper because it's nice and thin. Um, there's the rubbing I did um, way back when. Um, and we're going to do what I suggest doing for this is to trace two sides of your triangle. So just get either a pencil. I'm going to use a marker so that it's easy for you to see on camera. Um, it will bleed through, which I kind of like, but um, you do not have to use something if you don't want that bleed. So I trace it and then I flip it. So notice how I'm using that same side. And I trace that. So now I have my kite side, but but remember, just like the other kites, I have to have some extra paper to wrap around the bamboo so that it stays on, in place. So I'm going to m mark off about a half an inch away from my line. All the way around so I don't forget. And then finally, I'm going to make a mark so that I remember to cut out the corners so that when I fold it around, I don't wind up with this weird bunchiness. I've actually have these like nice clear places where the tab will fold over easily and it's not, um, and it's avoiding the corners. So I'm going to be cutting on the orange line. And I'm going to cut out those corners. And then the next thing that we're going to do is just make this nice and easy to glue to the tetrahedral. So I'm going to go ahead and fold it on those lines, on all the blue lines or the interior lines. And then we get our glue. Or we, first we remember which side that we <laughs> measured. Makes life a lot easier. I think on one of the other ones I did not do that and I had to shift it around a lot. And then we're going to butter those flaps with glue. Or spread glue on them so that we can just plop the kite in or the, the frame in and wrap it around. super easy and there you have it that is one part one of four I need to make three more in order to um, have a kite and for this week you just need to make two of these so I'm going to do this one more time but this is 400 times the speed all right 400 percent just so it's nice and quick Tracing it two sides, 
looking through my mess on the table to see if I can find stuff. Kind of a hallmark of how I work. And then I'm marking an inch for my edges and marking out the corners. Folding on all the interior lines. And then spreading glue on the tabs. And folding them over. And there you go. All right. So the next video, you can wait till next week, but I'm going to go ahead and post it. And that is so that you can um, fit, you know, go ahead and, and do the whole thing if you want. But please feel free to wait. All right, so now we're going to start working on the um, next part, which would, the first part would be to, if you've only made two of the um, pieces, you need to make the other two. So you need four total tetrahedrons to combine together. And then what we're going to do is um, we're going to get some paper and glue. Um, you eventually, if you need to default to tape, you may. Um, but I want to see you try. Um, I want to see evidence in your work that you've tried to um, use glue. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a um, just about an inch wide by three inch long piece of paper. And that's going to work as my um, tape. So I'm folding this in half because um, it's going to wrap around the side of the kite and I'm cutting a little notch uh, that will allow me to um, wrap it around. And then I'm going to uh, get some glue after I get the glue off my hands. And just coat the paper with the glue. Be very careful, um, especially where that notch is. It wants to rip in half. So you just have to, um, and you might even find that it's easier to uh, cut that notch later on after you put it on the kite, which is fine. You're going to find your own way of how you like to do this after you get the hang of it a little bit. So these connections when they're wet are really fragile. So there you can see that notch came in handy and I flipped it around. So now they are connected. Um, so don't handle it like you see me handling it because um, it's about to break. <laughs> um, and I would say just doing that and letting it dry and then coming back and doing the other parts if you can. It's a lot less frustrating if you let those very, you know, once it dries, it'll be much stronger. Um, but the pa that particular paper went wet. Oh, I did rip it. Yeah, you can see I'm putting in a little Band-Aid for part of it because it got torn a little bit and I knew it was going to break. Make sure that the paper is going in the same direction for each triangle. So you want them to look uniform. That's how they're going to pick up the wind. Um, so you need them to be facing in the same direction. Okay, so now you're going to see me continue to do that for each side, but it's going to be a lot faster now. Um, so there I didn't even cut it first. I'm doing that afterwards. That actually seemed to be a bit easier. But basically what you're doing is just paper taping each corner together. Um, and then the last one's a little different. I guess I didn't like that one, huh? Um, It took a few tries. It's actually pretty tricky. I don't think it's beyond um, 
any of you. I just think you might find that you have to have some patience and try things. And definitely, um, it would have gone a lot better for me if I'd let it dry through each step. So this last one's a little different because it's wrapping around bamboo, not paper. Because you have to connect those two sticks. It's really the same. It's just a piece of paper that's going to get cut and I actually didn't even cut it, did I? Huh. Um, and then let it dry. <laughs> it's so much easier if you don't do it the way I'm doing it right now. So now for this last one, um, I'm going to cut triangles. That way I can just kind of wrap them around the top and it's consistent with the look of the kite. You might find that you have a different way that you want to do it, but I just found that that was nice and easy. And that way I didn't have to cut away a bunch of it. It, could j it just looked like a design choice. You know, it just kind of mimics what, you know, the sort of pattern that we already have going with the triangles. There. And so now we have a bell tetrahedral kite. Oh, looks like I got one more. Oh, just a fix. Yeah. So there you go. Let it dry and it'll be very, very sturdy. Um, and then you can photograph it and upload it to our website.